Greetings, Summerlin Area Command. I'm your captain, Sasha Larkin. Thanks so much for joining us today on our very first virtual First Tuesday, uh, also known as Cinco de Mayo and a day after May the 4th be with you. And I would also be so remiss if I didn't acknowledge that today we have a very exciting partnership with a friend of mine of 21 and a half years, and I know that because we went through the police academy together, uh, Captain George Warner, who's the commander of Enterprise Area Command, we decided that since we share a boundary line, that we wanted to join forces today and let our teams do virtual First Tuesday together. So we're very excited to bring you not one, but two Area Commands. So you get double your pleasure, double the fun for virtual First Tuesday. So welcome, Captain Warner. We're so happy to have you Thank here you, on Captain virtual Warner. First Tuesday. We have a really exciting lineup prepared for you guys today. We're hoping to give you some information to get you through these last few days of quarantine, right? It's been a long couple of weeks. I'm sure that you guys have all been on YouTube looking for ideas and different websites and probably even learning how to homeschool your kids. And we want to bring you today some fun ideas, a couple in-home workouts, and some crime-fighting tips to get you through. All right, I want to also acknowledge, I hope you guys had an amazing Easter. I hope that Passover was fun and joyous. And for those of you in the middle of celebrating Ramadan, happy Ramadan Mubarak. So many great things happening. And of course, my favorite holiday coming up on Sunday, in case my son is watching, foot rubs are accepted. Happy Mother's Day to all of you brave, courageous mothers out there. It's a day for you to get pampered and adorned. And I hope that your kids, your spouses, everybody is watching and they don't forget just how valuable you all are. All right. So listen, I want to give you guys a couple updates. Uh, it was really important that we talk a little bit about crime because it's what you're always interested in. We've been tracking our crime, as you guys know, we always track by 28 days. Uh, we always tell you year to date updates and we give you 28 day updates. But what I want to give you today is a couple things that are good. All right, the first is burglaries are down across the valley. We're really excited about that. And you might be wondering, is it just due to your stellar police work, Captain Larkin? Well, I wish we could take all the credit, but you guys have been home. You've been home, so burglaries have gone down significantly. Uh, and as a matter of fact, burglaries are down in Summerlin almost 43%. So good job locking your cars, good job locking your homes, and a couple of good things are working. Now let me tell you on burglaries where we're still falling a little short. You guys are still leaving your guns in your cars. As a matter of fact, almost 20% of our stolen guns were stolen out of unlocked cars. So you got to lock your cars, Summerlin Area Command. And I'm sure Enterprise probably suffers from something very similar. That's correct. So just think, we could, cut, we could keep 20%, at least 20% of the stolen guns off the streets if you guys would lock your cars. Oh, and by the way, your gun does not protect your center console of your car when you're not in it. So please, take it inside, practice responsible gun ownership, lock up your guns. For us in Summerlin, I'm always asked, what really drives your crime? What, what is it that we can do to help? All right, four things this month, Summerlin, that we need your help on. The first one, when we look at our crime statistics and what is really driving it right now, are aggravated assaults, which are, encompass a lot of things. But the one that's probably the most obvious that we get asked the most questions about, is domestic violence up during the COVID crisis? Yes, it is, simply put. We are experiencing more calls for service during the COVID crisis for domestic violence because, again, you guys are home. You're in your homes together. I'm sure that in a lot of places, frustrations, tensions, financial problems, kids being home, all of those things are uh, happening for all of us in our homes. So we have some tips. If you go log on to our Facebook, our Twitter, any of our social media pages, we've been posting ways that you can kind of help keep the peace in your homes. Uh, the other thing that I want to acknowledge is that's an aggravated assault is road rage. Man, slow down, take a deep breath. I don't know if you guys are seeing an enterprise. Yeah, actually we're seeing a lot. Um, the most alarming thing, I think there's less cars on the road, so people are tending to drive faster. Exactly. Um, last year, year to date, we had two fatal accidents this year, and oh, so a lot of those are from speed too, right? Speed. People not wearing their seatbelts, getting ejected from the vehicle. Um, people not maintain the lane probably because they're going too fast. Right, and on their cell phones. And on their cell phones, and we had one because of alcohol related. So just slow down, pay attention, and be careful of the intersections. Absolutely, please, you guys. These are all preventable. 
preventable accidents just by you guys slowing down, taking a deep breath. Listen, if somebody cuts you off, that's about them, not you. It's never worth it. We have so many people pulling guns on each other because they cut each other off and then getting into these altercations. At the end of the day, it's just not worth it. So that's the second thing that's really driving our numbers. Um, the other thing I want to mention that our, uh, both of our community-oriented teams have been working very hard on is trying to help and find resources for the unhoused. Uh, sometimes they're referred to as the homeless. Listen, uh, we have very large area commands. Between Summerlin Area Command and Enterprise Area Command, it's uh, well over 100 square miles. I know alone we're 70 square miles, and you guys, I'm sure, are pretty close to that. Yeah, we're like 90 square miles. So 160 square miles, and within that are a lot of folks that struggle for housing. But here's what we want to tell you. Here's the good news. Our community, our city, our county have been working very hard to put resources together to help the unhoused. And Catholic Charities and Salvation Army and a lot of these places have really stepped up. There are resources out there. But what isn't helpful is a lot of times when you guys, I know it just, it probably is a feel good measure. You want to stop on the side of the road and give money or give food. It's causing an increase in accidents, pedestrian and a roadway accidents. And it's really causing an uptick in some of our crimes and some of our accidents. So we're just asking, please help us help these folks, get them the help they need. Uh, because at the end of the day, we're out there to really keep the streets safer and get folks the resources they need. Uh, lastly, the thing that we're seeing is that one of our sergeants is going to cover for you today is online sales. I know that a lot of these websites make it very easy to sell your things online, to sell your cell phone, your laptop, whatever it is. We're going to offer you tips, and we have been posting for the last month or so, some tips to stay safe when making these online sales. And I know that we're going to cover it in detail, so please refer again to our social media. Uh, but we are seeing an uptick in some of robberies and petty larcenies and grand larcenies that happen when people are trying to sell things uh, off these um, online sales. All right, so that's kind of what's driving our crime right now. And you guys know that the world has just been a little bit uh, upside down. But what we want to offer you is this. Every day, the men and women of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department lace up their boots and go out there on the street to keep you safe. They continue every day to be the calm to the chaos out there. And I promise you this, we will continue to do that. Thank you so much, those of you that have come to the police stations and been so abundantly generous. I can't even tell you how much food and, and wonderful donations we've received uh, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, we just thank you. There's too many of them for me to mention, but we are going to run them uh, on the comment section for our Facebook Live for you guys to see, because it, we would just be remiss if we didn't say thank you. Uh, we really appreciate it. And let me tell you why. Because the officers come in from a long shift or halfway through their shift, and sometimes they feel maybe a little uh, deflated or exhausted, or they just see right the hardest of calls, and they come in and there's a warm meal waiting for them, or there's you know treats that somebody brought in, and it really brightens their entire day. So everyone, from the bottom of our hearts, thank, you, thank you so much for your kindness and generosity. It does not go unnoticed, and it certainly doesn't go unappreciated. All right, so I'm going to get off and let some of our wonderful uh, speakers talk, and I want Captain Warner to have a chance to address. Uh, Enterprise Area Command, but just let me say from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Summerlin Area Command. Thank you for continuing to just uh, be the calm during this time. I know that it's been a very challenging few weeks, and we couldn't have done it without you. So thank you. Captain Warner. Thank you. Well, I just want to say thank you for your support and your partnership, because without you, it's impossible for us to be successful at our job. So thank you very much. I know it's, it's a tough time. Um, even today, Cinco de Mayo falls on Taco Tuesday. I mean, that's just a cruel joke, right? We should be out having fun, having a good time. Uh, but we'll get through it. Uh, we're, we're all doing well. We're doing good. And I hope everyone is safe and healthy. And, and we're, we're looking forward to the future. We're looking forward to the summer. So thank you. And also, one more thing I do want to mention is that our area commands, uh, front offices are open starting today. Uh, if you do want to make a station report, make sure you wear a mask. They're going to be taking your temperature as well. And also uh, the fingerprint bureau and the evidence vault is open today as well. So thank you. Which is great. That means we're moving in the right direction. That's correct. And listen, we just want to assure the community of a couple things. Uh, one is that your police department, the LVMPD, has really been working tirelessly around the clock. And we're so blessed to be under the leadership of Sheriff Lombardo and his entire executive staff because 
They have really been putting our safety and your safety first. Uh, and at the end of the day, that's what matters. And that's why our front offices were closed for so many weeks. So just so you know, it's, it's a huge step in the right direction we feel like we are uh, able to take by opening those offices. And hey, last thing, uh, Summerlin, it is Mental Health Awareness Month, which is a big deal for us, something we talk about a lot internally because it is something that affects all of us. No matter what socioeconomic background, what uh, diversity you come from, mental health affects all of us, right? And in May, we take the opportunity to really send out pointers and address it both internally within our agency because we're working every day to prevent officer suicide. Uh, last year, over 228 cops lost their life to suicide uh, around the country. And that's just too many. So we want to really make sure we're talking about it with our folks inside, but also for you, uh, <clears throat> Las Vegas, understand that there is help out there, there are resources, and throughout this month we're going to be posting it on all of our social media. And if you need uh, anything further, please feel free to reach out. We're happy to get you those resources. Anything else, Captain Warner? No, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much, Captain Larkin and Captain Warner. It's an absolute uh, privilege of mine to serve under Captain Larkin in the Community Oriented Policing Bureau. We are um, a team made up for every area of command, community policing, uh, that focuses on bringing events like this, first Tuesday, to the community. My name is Brian Leahy. I'm the sergeant of uh, the team up here at Summerlin Area Command. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you like and also share your comments. Uh, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. And if we can't get to your question, myself or my team will try to answer your questions later in the week. I want to welcome Enterprise Area Command. We combined our first Tuesdays so that they could be with us. And like Captain Larkin quickly put together that map of 160 square miles. We are here to serve you. And anytime you want to reach out to us, be it we have a SAC, Summerlin Area Command email. You can come into our front desk from now on, and also you can call in to the community policing team, and we can try to help you whatever problems that you may be having outside of the, the normal 311 and 911 calls. Um, today, the setup is going to be pretty simple. Going along with social distancing, we're going to try to keep six people six feet apart and focus on six topics that we are seeing out in the streets. So today, I'm going to introduce uh, each person as they come up. And as you go along, please, again, throw out those comments and uh, positive comments. We all have the support. Um, this is Detective Bill Gibbs of the Police Employee Assistance Program. We call it PEEP. As you said, my name is Bill Gibbs. I'm manager of the Police Employee Assistance Program, PEEP. And what is PEEP? PEEP is not just a uh, Easter candy. It's the Police Employee Assistance Program. And what is, what is our role in the agency? I work under the direction of our director, Annette Mullen, myself as manager, and we have six peer counselors. All peer counselors, police officers, corrections officers, and civilian employees. There are no professional counselors in our office. And what is our role? One of the roles we have is we're tasked with the mental health and well-being of our police officers. We're one of the few uh, bureaus of our agency that does not have direct involvement with our public. That doesn't say it's not to say we don't have a we don't provide a public service. How do we provide that public service? By ensuring that you have the most effective, well, the most stable, hardworking police officer that's going to give you the level of service that you deserve and be a true partner with our community. Uh, some of the tips we give some of our officers that are involved in critical incidents, such as officer involved shooting and other critical incidents, can translate over into the civilian world. So I'm going to share some of those with you. Uh, we deal with officers who are involved with critical incidents. We deal with officers who are having marital issues, alcohol issues. Any, we, don't forget, we hire from the uh, population of our community, so we're going to have the same issues as our, as our community has. Officers that are involved in critical incidents, such as officer-involved shootings, they suffer a lot of the isolation that you folks are all enduring right now as a public. Uh, they are placed on administrative leave. They're kind of on an island on their own for a little bit. And these are tips that we help get them through that. And like I said before, I think it translates perfectly into what you guys are going through now with the coronavirus. Social distancing, very important. But remember, it's not emotional distancing, OK? You, you can still remain in touch with your friends, with your family. And you've probably found out a lot of, this, a, a lot of ways of how to do this already. One of them right now, we're doing through Facebook. That's a very important way and a very easy way for you guys to stay in touch. Telephone, computer conversations, 
Zoom, all the ones that go with that, you can stay in touch without actually being in physical contact with another person, and that's very important. Sticking to a routine. If you've worked out so many days a week, we want you to continue doing that. You want to have a routine through the week? That's not to say that you want to bog down your week uh, being so strict that you're not enjoying yourself, but you want to stay to a routine as much as possible. And when I say stick to that routine and st stick to the things that you can do while adhering to the recommendations for social and uh, interaction and isolation to keep everybody safe. Exercise and physical activity, again, you want to do that, those activities that are going to not put you at risk for becoming hospitalized. Some of the more risky things, skydiving, even bicycling, you have to be careful because you don't want to eat up the resources of our trauma units and our emergency beds because you've had a fall, trip or fall at home and you're eat, eating up a bed that could be used for somebody who's exhibiting signs of the coronavirus. Uh, but even, probably even more than exercise, one of our uh, clinicians who contracts with us pushes sleep, sleep, sleep. Sleep is number one. Now she tells us that you need to set aside 10 hours of sleep a night. A lot of you are going to laugh. Who here has gotten 10 hours of sleep in the last two years? Not many. But she's not saying you need to get 10 hours of sleep a night. She means you need to set a, set a routine of your sleep, set 10 hours aside for that. That is the preparations of getting ready for bed, the brushing of teeth, the readying the bed, the readying the atmosphere, so that when you finally do get to bed, maybe you're getting six hours. Maybe if you're lucky, you're getting eight hours. But the important thing is you need to set that time aside. If you're only setting eight hours aside in each night, starting to get, get ready for bed at that time, you're going to be lucky to get six, five, which a lot of us operate on. Learning and intellectual engagement. If you're a reader, dive into those books that you've never had an opportunity to get with. Uh, magazine subscriptions that you've not read for months on end. And even limiting yourself, there are some useful things on the internet. You can uh, read uh, interesting articles and intellectual articles that are going to stimulate you and help you get through this. Positive family time. We've all complained, myself included, that you've never had enough positive time to spend with your family because of the stressors of work. Many of us now have an opportunity to spend more time with our families. So we need you to take advantage of that, focus on that, and appreciate that time with your families right now because this situation that we're in right now, it, it will pass. And you don't want to have those missed opportunities where you could have really bonded as a family and become tighter. Alone time. We talked about the isolating, isolation and not wanting to be isolated, but there's nothing wrong with spending some alone time to, to, to reflect on your life, to better yourself, maybe pick up meditation, other relaxation techniques to, to improve upon yourself. So take advantage of that alone time as well. And remember that list of things that you, you like to do, your hobbies outside of work that we've always had? I'm sure we've all found out now that that list might be a little short. We're running out of things to do. Now it's time for you to examine that maybe your list should be longer. Maybe your list should be bigger. And a lot of our police officers, as they, as they uh, approach the retirement age, maybe it's a little dry run for them, right? That beyond Metro, beyond your work life, there's retirement. And for those who are retired, you probably know what I'm talking about, that that time gets, that time gets eaten up. And you, you need to fill that time with positive, positive things for yourself. Lastly, I'm going to tell you to limit your exposure to television, something we tell our officers that are involved in critical incidents, but especially now. There's not a lot, a lot of positive news that's on the television right now. If you tend to watch too much television, you might engross yourself in that, fixate on that, get depressed about it, which is understandable. It's the sad, depressing news that makes the news, right? It's not a lot of the positive stories. Occasionally, you'll get that, but not too often. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is something we push out to our employees. Watch out for one another. Look out for one another. Care for one each other, for one another. We are responsible for one another. Check in on those that isolate and be supportive of all your fellow employees, all your fellow citizens, and please be uh, supportive of our police officers that hit the streets and do their best to serve you under these very trying times. And I appreciate your time. Hey, thank you so much, Detective Gibbs. We believe that the Public Employee Assistance Program, PEEP, is something that the officers use all the time and their families to look for someone for guidance on uh, our mental health. So that's terrific that they're able to share their time with us today. Um, I also want to thank everyone that's sharing their time by watching us. There's a lot of supporters out there right now that we see that are watching from all over the world. 
Um, I'd like to say hi, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. And right now, we're going to go into Lieutenant, uh, Lieutenant Michelle Tavares, who is going to recognize some of her employees that have done some amazing, outstanding work. Hello, Summerlin Area Command. I'm the day shift lieutenant, Lieutenant Michelle Tavares, and I'm very honored to be able to announce that the employees that we have chosen to recognize for this month's First Tuesday come from day shift. Every, uh, every month, we, we as a leadership team here at Summerlin get together and decide uh, which officers we'd like to recognize for the hard work that they're doing. And those officers came from day shift. So let me introduce you to Officer Mays. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Officer Black. Hello. And Officer Allen. I'm going to go ahead and read to you and explain uh, what it is that the, these three amazing officers did. On April 27th, Officer Black, Officer Mays, and Officer Allen were all involved in a vehicle stop regarding a moped with a stolen license plate. The driver was on probation with Nevada parole and probation for possession of stolen vehicle. During a search incident to arrest, officers located narcotics on the subject. Due to the subject's probationary status, PNP responded to conduct a home and electronic search. The subject advised he was living at a house located on Tobler Drive. Officers and PMP responded to the location and determined it was being used as a narcotics residence. Several subjects were located within the residence. Among the subjects contacted were a subject who was wanted by PNP for several firearms related charges, a subject who had an active felony warrant for possession of stolen vehicle, and the main tenant at the residence who knew that all these subjects were residing there. Everyone contacted at the residence had an extensive criminal history. During parole and probation search of the residence, it was determined the main subject had established a fraud lab in his room. After an electronic search was conducted, it was determined the subject was also selling narcotics out of an RV parked behind the residence on Cimarron Avenue. The RV contained an additional fraud lab as well as narcotics. Financial crimes detectives executed a telephonic search warrant for the residence and the RV, recovering two fraud labs along with more narcotics. Ultimately, numerous felony arrests were made and criminal offenders who caused major problems in our area were removed from the street. You three officers are to be commended for your outstanding teamwork, your extensive investigative prowess, and relentless follow-up. You had information that a subject was selling narcotics from a moped in the area that you had previously made contact with, and you'd previously made contact with the RV earlier in the shift. You were able to piece together all of this information, the stolen moped, the residents, and the RV, determining they were all related to each other, leading to several additional criminal charges. You sent a strong message that we will not tolerate criminal activity in our community. Each of you have made an enormous impact combating violent crime within Summerlin Area Command, making it a safer place to live. We could not be more proud of your high level of work ethic and work product. Each of you are an incredible asset to the Las Vegas community, and the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. Thank you for your excellence in all you do. <clears throat> Officer Mays, for you, sir. Yeah. Officer Black. Yeah. And Officer Allen. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you guys so much for all your hard work. I'm proud to say that you're day shift officers here at Summerlin. Thank you. I'd like to mention that during these times of recognition, we usually love to involve the families of these officers because they're so uh, dedicated to the job, we know that impacts their families also. Um, but due to social distancing, we cannot have them here. So please, for those officers' families, know that the leadership here at Summerlin Area Command, Lieutenant Gibbon and Captain Larkin and all the lieutenants really appreciate the officers' work. Um, also, due to social distancing, we would have had them separated by six feet, of course. But Facebook had only zoom in so much. So, uh, next up is going to be Detective Hernandez from the Las Vegas' Family Justice Court, where we have detectives assigned from LVMPD to talk about a little bit about domestic violence and rising tensions in the homes. Good afternoon. I'm Detective Juan Fernandez from the Family Justice Center uh, here in Southern Nevada. Um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of uh, history with the Family Justice Center. It's something that's uh, a center throughout the country where it's a one-stop shop for victims of domestic violence, human trafficking, and sexual assault. And the idea behind this is to get a lot of resources under one roof so that victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, and human trafficking don't have to go to different areas 
uh, to get the help and the resources that they need. Uh, we are located at 861 North Mojave Road, Las Vegas, Nevada. And we are open Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Some of the issues we've been uh, having here with COVID is domestic violence and the rise of domestic violence. Uh, we have an average of 19 to 20 calls for service uh, that has increased throughout this time. And it's very important for victims of domestic violence to reach out for help. There's uh, family members or friends that they could reach out to. And if we are those family members and friends, we need to be able to help them out and guide them and in these hard times. Uh, with COVID and everybody being uh, in the house, not being able to get uh, help or to be able to talk to those other people, uh, we see the rise in crime. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was uh, temporary protected, uh, protection orders. Uh, people think that you need a police report to get a protection order, but that's not correct. If you feel like you need a protection order against a family member or a boyfriend or husband and you want to get out of the relationship and you feel that your life is in danger, you could apply for a temporary protective order at family court and that will be granted to you and you do not need a police report. You do not need for this incident to become violent for you to reach out and get a protection order. I think that's a very important thing for uh, individuals to know and understand. Uh, we at the Family Justice Center can help out with the protection order. We could help you fill it out and guide you through that and then we'll send it to family court and you will have an answer to see if the protection order was granted for you. Uh, there's also Legal Aid, which is one of our partners and they can help you out through child custody issues, um, through uh, child support and divorce. And these are free of charge uh, for any victims of domestic violence. Um, we could also help you out with our victims advocates and they help out with safety planning. Um, they could help you with counseling and advocacy. Also, we have access to temporary housing uh, through Safeness, who is also a partner of ours. So if you need any of that help with any of those resources, it's free of charge. You could come into our office and we could help you out with that information. Uh, something else with domestic violence is that we want to, through this COVID time, um, have some uh, help uh, with friends. And some of the things you could do as a friend is reach out to an uh, individual that you think is a victim of domestic violence and ask them if they need any help or give them a phone number uh, for any of these resources. The Family Justice Center phone number is 702-828-7714. Once again, 702-828-7714. That's the phone number for the Family Justice Center. Uh, we could help you out in English and Spanish. And if uh, we are not open uh, after four, you could leave a message and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Um, also with that, we have a lot of members in a Hispanic community that might need help and there's uh, information on the uh, U visa which is if you be, are a victim of a violent felony domestic violence uh, you could apply for a visa U visa and what that does is you could get um, rights to be in the United States and we could help you out with that process as well. Uh, another partner of ours is a uh, rape crisis center and like I said, if you're a victim of sexual assault, we could also help you out with that and with our advocates. Detective Fernandez, thank you so much. Uh, ultimately, it's amazing how many resources the department has teamed up with, partnered, or located, because if there's an issue going on in your house, it's, it's not gonna be um, something that's only unique to you. There's gonna be situations that we've come in contact with and we've found solutions. So please have faith, contact us, and we can partner you with the right resources. So please rely on us, give us a call, and next I would like to introduce Lieutenant Romaine of the Sergeant Military Command Swing Shift. He's going to be giving officers uh, recognition for employees of the quarter. Good afternoon, Sergeant Military Command. I'm Lieutenant Ken Romaine. I'm the Swing Shift uh, Lieutenant here at Sergeant Military Command. With me is Sergeant Wojcik and Officer Jovan Magazine. Today I have the distinct pleasure of honoring Officer Magazine for his heroic actions, if I could share with you. On April 18, 2020, at approximately 12.42 hours, Officer Jovan Martin Magazine excuse me, 
was going to work at Summerlin Area Command to complete paperwork before the start of his shift. While in the area of Hacienda and Durango, Officer Magazine realized the scooter was down in the roadway ahead of him. He slowed down to investigate and observed a female lying down in the roadway a short distance from the scooter. Officer Magazine immediately stopped his vehicle to block traffic and render aid. As he approached the female, he observed that her left leg had been severed above the knee. Knowing the female was in dire need of medical attention, Officer Magazine ran back to his vehicle while simultaneously calling 911 and grabbed his personal tourniquet. The victim was bleeding profusely, but after Officer Magazine quickly and properly applied the tourniquet, causing the bleeding to stop, she was eventually transported by ambulance to UMC trauma. The initial medical assessment on scene was that the victim would possibly die as a result of her injuries. However, Dr. Frazier, who was the administering physician, stated that the tourniquet was applied properly and there was no bleeding upon the victim's arrival at the trauma center. Subsequently, the victim was later listed in stable, non-life-threatening condition. Officer Magazine is hereby commended for his heroic actions on this day because his specific actions saved a human life. His preparation of keeping a tourniquet with him while off duty, steadfast and steadfast devotion to duty, even when not officially at work, are in keeping with the highest traditions of the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department. It's also my honor to recognize Officer uh, Magazine for Employee of the Quarter as well. Officer Magazine. Thank you. What a tr uh, terrific recognition. Ultimately, Officer Magazine, under his leadership of uh, Sergeant Wojak and Lieutenant Romaine, uh, maybe he saved the life. And also, I'll tell you what, that partnership with the community is on duty and off duty, and I just love hearing successful stories like that of our LBMPD employees. Next up is going to be one of our local sergeants. He's a patrol detective sergeant here at Summerlin Area Command, Sergeant Schwartz. Good afternoon, and uh, thank you, Sergeant Leahy. I'd like to discuss the many internet-based resale sites that people use today. I'm sure you've heard of most of these. They include OfferUp, Facebook, LetGo, Craigslist, Mercari, and many others. These internet-based sales sites allow an individual to sell an item in their possession to a buyer or purchase an item from a seller that they meet through the site. While these sites and many like them offer an excellent avenue by which to obtain or sell items, they can also be fraught with danger. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department receives many cases each year involving stolen property, theft, and in some instances, violent robberies from the interactions that occur as a result of the utilization of these internet-based sites. Not everybody listening or viewing this today utilizes these sites, but you may very well know somebody that does. Therefore, I'd like to offer a few tips and different things that you or someone you know can do to better protect and prevent becoming a victim. One of the first and perhaps one of the most important things you do when utilizing these sites is to check the account of the individual that you are dealing with. Check their prior ratings. How many previous sales have they done? What do previous contacts have to say about this individual? Are they friendly? Are they trustworthy? Check to see if the individual is verified. Many of these sites will allow the person to link other information such as their Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, etc. Explore these other sites as well to do further investigation about the buyer or seller. How long has the buyer or seller been active on the particular site you are on? Be very wary of somebody who has just joined and shows no history of sales or purchases on the site as this could be an indication that it is a fake or bogus account. Look to see what else is being sold. Are they selling a lot of phones or other types of the same electronics? This too could be an indication of criminal activity. If possible, obtain a phone number and use telephone communication to complete the details of the meet to exchange money and product. Phones are an excellent investigative source for police as they are much easier to track and it verifies that the individual has a cell phone with a working number tied to them. If a person is not willing to give you their phone number or not willing to complete the transaction utilizing text message or voice communication, this should raise a red flag in any business deal. Once a deal is agreed upon, make sure to screenshot the account information of the individual with whom you are dealing. In many instances, once the deal is agreed upon, the criminal will delete their account in order to prevent police from obtaining their information. However, if you would screenshot it beforehand and were then the unfortunate victim of a crime, at least we would have the information needed. When utilizing these sites and selling items, it is important to choose the best location and best time of day. Try to select the time of day when the area you have chosen will be busy and full of other people. We want the area of the transaction to be well populated, well lit, 
and to have surveillance cameras present. Make sure to complete the transaction near the front of the store or inside the store. I understand right now that might be entirely possible due to the restrictions involving COVID-19. Do your best. One place I suggest is a police station. Bring a friend. Don't go alone. Don't be afraid to have your phone out and take a picture or video of the transaction. You can use the idea or notion that you want to have a record for tax purposes or in case the individual tries to dispute something later over some aspect of the deal. A picture or video of a suspect in a crime is invaluable. Lastly, do not be afraid ever to back out of a business deal. Trust your instincts. If something doesn't feel right, it isn't. Since we have a little bit of time, I'd like to touch briefly now about online, email, phone, and text message scams. As I'm sure many of you are aware, these are rampant right now. I don't know anyone who hasn't received a text message from a bank, a phone call, or from someone claiming to be the Social Security Administration. Never give your Social Security number, any account number, PIN number, or personal information over the phone, via email, or text. If this is a legitimate phone call from a company with which you have done or are doing business, they will already have this information. Please know that no legitimate nonprofit organization or volunteer organization will solicit money or donations over the phone. If you have any doubt about the validity of a conversation, call the police. Do an internet search. Verify, check, and recheck before providing any information to an individual you do not know or have not met in person. Lastly, uh, Facebook. Facebook is a wonderful tool that has allowed friends and family members to get and remain connected across great distances and time. However, it's also an excellent place for criminals and scam artists to harvest information about you and your loved ones. Be very wary and cautious about completing any questionnaires or tests or quizzes that ask anything about you or your history, even if they have come from your friends. Remember that many legitimate sites that utilize passwords also have security questions in case you forget that password. By participating in these quizzes or phishing attempts that come across Facebook every so often, you may unwittingly be providing scam artists or hackers with the information they need to crack into one of your various accounts or even learn your passwords. Keep your information guarded. Don't be afraid to ask questions or seek advice from a trusted source. If you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to the police department. Stay safe and stay vigilant. Thank you very much. Sergeant Lee. Sergeant Schwartz, thank you so much for that good information. It's super important information that he just uh, shared with us that are going to try to keep you safe and also keep you uh, selling your goods but in a safe manner. LVPD strive, strives to be at the forefront of bringing you the most current information at the most rapid pace that we can, hence this Facebook Live. Uh, next up is going to be Officer Jane Pinto who's going to talk about a new, uh, new program that we're implementing soon. Hi, I'm Officer Pinto with the Summer Area Command COP. We are in the process of putting together a new program called You Are Not Alone. Uh, our short name for that is YANA. The purpose of the program is a, a outreach program for our senior citizens in the area. The way the program will work is our Metro volunteers will uh, make contact with folks in the area on a regular basis uh, to make sure that you're okay. Uh, if you need any uh, services from other organizations, either private or public, and just in general let you know that, that you are not alone. Uh, the program right now, we don't have an official start date, but we're hoping to have the program up and running within the next month or so. Uh, we encourage you to keep an eye on our Facebook and Twitter accounts where we will be putting out the information uh, on the program. Uh, one of the things that is required for the program is that you are able to live on your own, um, that you provide us with the mechanism to actually check with you either by phone um, or a personal house visit, um, and that if we are not able to get a hold of you, that there are emergency contacts that we can get with and people that may have a key to your home. Uh, in any event, that is where we are with the program right now. Again, it's in its preliminary stages, but we hope to have the program ready to go very shortly. Uh, are there any questions I can answer about this program? OK, all right. Uh, thank you so much, and everybody stay safe. Awesome, Pinto, thank you so much. We're super excited about the YANA program because our senior citizens uh, are super involved in our 
uh, community, and we want to make sure that they know that we're super involved in their lives also. So we will be rolling that out, and I'm super excited to have everyone uh, join on that. I just want to remind you also that this month, uh, May 15th, is Police Memorial Day. So you might see a lot of shrouded badges on that day, but that's just for us to recognize our fallen officers, the brothers and sisters that have gone before us. Usually we have a big event here locally and also down in Washington, D.C., but obviously uh, social, con uh, social distancing consciousness, we want to make sure that everyone's safe. So please keep, you, uh, keep, you, keep us and our officers in your thoughts and prayers. Next up is Arlen from Orange Theory, who's a personal trainer, and she's going to describe a bunch of great things that you can do at your house with no extra tools or no extra equipment. Hello everybody, I'm Arlen from Orange Theory Fitness, and I'm here to talk to you about exercises you can do at home with just ordinary household items. Like for example, in the garage you probably can find a couple of uh, cans of paint. These are excellent for doing lower body exercises, for example, squats. Another great one will be lunges, stationary of course, or deadlifts. Now, for upper body, just check in your pantry, you might be able to find a couple of bottles of water or even a couple of cans of paint. These are great for bicep curls, great for laterals, or even tricep extensions. Now, if you live in an apartment and you probably don't have a lot in your pantry, you don't have a garage, no worries. One of my favorite ones is to grab an ordinary backpack, fill it up with shoes or clothing, and these make an excellent resistance. This is great for like to upright row, beautiful for ground to press, as well as you can just place the backpack on you, perfect for doing squats. And these are great because then you don't have any issues with balance. Now, I wanted to talk to you about some exercises. Like for example, best way to get into exercise is start 25 minutes of hit. What that means is high intensity interval training. That'll bring your heart rate up as well as bringing it down. So in between some exercises, I want you to think about jumping rope or high knees in case you have any orthopedic issues. Now, I'm going to give you a couple of, of examples. First one, using your cans of paint. If you don't have cans of paint, big jugs of water, fill them up to the desired resistance. Start right here into a stationary lunge. As you squat, you're going to bring it over to a bicep curl. Maybe give me a total of 10 on one side. Then when you switch it over to the opposite side, you can use those same cans of paint into a lateral raise. Tens on one side, ten on the other. Now in between, take your watch, 30 seconds, jump that rope, high knees, or remember, just exaggerate that move if you have orthopedic issues. 30 seconds. Then come back, grab those same cans of paint, and then bring it over to a lateral lunge into an upright row. You're going to alternate one to one side, one to the other. Again, a total of 10. So five on one side, five on the other. Go back to jumping that rope. And last but not least, you want to go ahead and take that backpack. Think about full body thrusters. So from here, squat and bring that backpack above your head. Once again, if you have any orthopedic issues with shoulders, squat a front row. All right. I hope it was informational. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me off. Thank you. Oh, I'm tired for her. That was amazing. So that's all workouts that you can do at home. And ultimately, don't forget, movement creates emotion, keeps you positive, and also you don't want to hurt yourself. So do it cautiously and do it at your own pace. And don't start sweating like me. Oh. Next up is Laura Van Dyke, an officer with the COP team, about other home activities that you can do. Hi everyone, I'm Officer Van Dyke with the Summerlin COP team. Thank you, Sergeant Leahy. And I know school is almost over, so some of these activities might not lend themselves to school, but they can at least lend themselves to the summer as it gets hotter and we can't quite go outside more often. So I have a couple activities I've prepared. I have a four and seven year old at home, so I feel the pain. Uh, the first one I'm gonna do is microwave Play-Doh. I can actually do it in my six minute time frame which is quite impressive. But what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with lemon juice and water. I'm gonna microwave that right now. Don't worry, it won't explode. 
So I'm gonna microwave that for three minutes. All I need to do is bring it to a boil. I'm gonna add in my flour and my salt. And then once that's done, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil to give it a little bit of texture. While you're waiting, if you want, I don't like to use rubber gloves. Sometimes you don't have them at home. So I actually have bags of food dye prepared. So once my mixture is all mixed together, I can put it in the bag and actually mix it that way so I don't walk out with different colored hands. So I've got those prepared. Let's see, how am I doing? Oh man, it's taking a long time. So while that's waiting, I can show you another quick exercise or activity. My little ones love to color. So what I've done is I've actually taken coloring pages. And what I did, I had some fun last night, I colored them. What you can then do is you can take these coloring pages and you can cut them up. Oh no! You can cut them up into strips. So what you effectively are doing is you're making a puzzle that they then have to put back together. So I'm not gonna cut this whole thing, but as you can see, I've got strips that make that picture a little different. And it's something you can do. What you can do to make this either easier or harder for your little ones is you can make wider strips, narrower strips. You can do zigzags. You can do all sorts of different shapes. And what that looks like once it's all cut and done is something like this. So this is something that I would say would be maybe for the older kids, something a little harder, more challenging. There's more pieces. Or something a little easier. I've got my Lego policeman smaller strips. And what you can do too is if you start, if your little ones are whiz, whiz kids, you can combine these strips together so that way they have to sort and then put the pictures together. So that's a quick little activity. They get to color, they can even cut, and then they get to work on some of those gross motor skills with that. How am I doing here? Almost done with the Play-Doh. I'm going to get two done in one. How about that? Something else we can do. Everyone likes to play ball. Even though the sports aren't running right now, we can play indoor ping pong. If you've noticed so far, everything I'm doing is stuff that we already have at home. So you don't have to go to the store, you don't have to bring the kids, you don't have to fight the lines, but wait your six feet. You can do all of this with what you have at home. So I have two popsicle sticks, I have my balloon, and I have my two paper plates. All I'm going to do is I'm going to tape my popsicle sticks to the back of my plates. I'm going to blow up my balloon to whatever desired uh, filling you want. I now have a very safe and uh, easy way to play ping pong inside the house. Now, if your kids can find a way to break something with this, I would be impressed. You can also make it uh, harder by having your kids learning how to count, so they can count how many times before it hits the ground. They can count by twos. They can see if you've got more plates, how many people can go in a row. So that's a nice little extension activity. Let's see how my Play-Doh is doing. Ooh. So I brought this to a boil inside the microwave. All I'm going to do is add my flour and my salt. Mix it together. Let's see, let's turn this upside down so we can watch. So I'm going to mix it together. The consistency is going to be a little rough for a minute until you get everything all squished together. See how am I doing? So it's kind of like kneading bread. You have to spread all the liquid throughout all of it. And if you have the little ones, they can always stick their fingers in and help you knead, but just be careful because it is hot. It did just come out of the microwave. Oh, take some elbow work here. So then what you would do at this point is I will add three, sorry, one tablespoon of cooking oil just for a little bit of, uh, little bit of 
grease to make sure it sticks a little better. Stick that there. Let's see. There we go. And we've got some nice Play-Doh. And the nice thing about this recipe is, like I said, you do it in the microwave instead of the oven. Excuse me. The microwave instead of the stove so the little ones can help. And um, this one takes no cream of tartar, which I know sometimes we don't always have at home. So that's a nice way to make the different kind of Play-Doh. And like I said, throw it in the back. And then from there, you can mix it up without getting those hands dirty. So as you can see, that one mixes up quite nicely. And you can just keep mixing until your desired color. I did a test run earlier. And as you can see, it soaks up the color really nicely. And it'll stay nice and soft for a while. Last thing I have, let's see, so much stuff going on. I know Captain Larkin already talked about Mother's Day. So here's a really nice, quick little activity. Mom, I know you're watching, so you have to not watch for this one, because you're going to be getting this in the mail. But what we've done is we've made Mother's Day watercolor cards. And this one's nice and simple. You just take a piece of watercolor paper. Let's see. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. So you're going to take that, and you can use a plastic bag. I also like to use a page protector. That works the same. But all you have to do, put the bag over your card, take some desired colors. So I'm going to actually color on the bag. This is where you can get creative. Your little ones can color in Sharpie first off. And make sure it's Sharpie, because if you use a washable marker first, we're actually going to be using some water, so your original design is going to fade and it's going to wash away. So here's my bag with my color on it, if you can see that. Here it is behind my card. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take a spray bottle, or if you have just water, you can flick it with your hands, get it a little wet. And I'm going to put my card right on top, press it out. And there's a nice little color transfer. So if anyone wants to help make a Mother's Day card, Father's Day is coming up too, or any other kind of card, if you want to just write to somebody in your family, if, you, uh, if you're not able to see them, that's another cute little activity that you want to do. Whoop. So like I said, any questions, anything, all of these you can change depending on the age of your child at home. Anything else, let me know. I've got more activities if you want to see more. But I think that's it for today. Well, that's it for our first virtual first Tuesday. Summer Larry Command, Enterprise Larry Command. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll take away some tips, some workouts. I hope to see you guys all outside using what you have in your garage for squats and lunges and all kinds of exciting things. And hey, listen, if you take anything away from today, know this know that you are never alone. Your police department is here 24-7 if you should need anything. And now that our front offices are back open, please know that you're always able to come in 9 to 5, Monday through Friday. We're still doing online reports. All of these things here for your convenience. We thank you so much for tuning in today. Captain Warner, thank final you. thoughts? Stay safe, stay healthy. That's it. We hope that you know we will see you as soon as we're able to open our area commands. We look forward to having an in-person first Tuesday as soon as we're able to. And remember, one breath at a time, one day at a time, we will all get through this. It's just a temporary inconvenience. But remember, excellence, it all starts.